Greetings once again, AP Calculus AP students. Mr. Record here from Avon High School, and we are just stuck right here in the middle of topic 4.5, which is all about solving word problems using the idea of related rates. And our upcoming example five out of the notes packet that I use at the school is all about a changing cylinder. So what do you say we take a look and dive right into this? So example five starts off by saying a right circular cylinder has a height and a radius which are both changing. And then we can branch off and we can actually do two separate problems here. Our problem A says the radius is growing at two feet per minute and the height is shrinking at a rate of three feet per minute. Find the rate of change of the volume of the cylinder at the moment the height is 10 feet and the radius is eight feet. And I like to scaffold these problems if you've uh, seen a, a, one of our previous videos into the picture given find an equation subcategories because I tend to think that that kind of gets the juices flowing, it gets some information on paper and it certainly enhances the chance of, of getting a little deeper into the problem. So what I'm gonna do with the picture is I'm gonna try to draw a cylinder here. So we've got this beautiful little cylinder and as we know about most cylinders that we encounter is that they have heights to them and this is a height that is changing and it has a radius to them and this radius is changing as well and if i want to use arrows it says the radius is growing so maybe i can put a positive or right direction arrow above the radius and if the height is shrinking i might put a little downward arrow to indicate that but that's really about all i can draw with this picture maybe the picture isn't going to be super helpful but we can always go back and label it more if we need to now for the given i always like to underline my rates that have been provided radius growing at a rate of two feet per minute. So what we can do with that is call that dr dt, and we know that that's equivalent to positive two because of the word growing. And then I believe that there's another word here, height shrinking at a rate of three feet per minute. So along with that, we know that the dh dt is negative three. You're asked to find the rate of change of the volume of the cylinder at the moment the height is 10 feet and the radius is 8 feet. So that's where your find comes into play, the rate of change of the volume. I'll say dv dt, and I know specifically when h is going to be the 10 and r is going to be the 8. Again, you're getting a lot of really good information down on paper. The equation, well, if you put basically the picture and the find together, usually those two ideas can hook up and pretty much deliver what your equation is going to be. And this would be the volume of a cylinder, which is V equal pi R squared H. Now, this is the kind of a equation that you would not have to memorize going into the AP exam or on my exams or quizzes, because I will provide you with all of the three-dimensional shapes that involve pi, it's a dead giveaway that you guys are going to be able to, uh, uh, you'll be provided with those formulas and don't have to memorize them. So it's really now a great time to take our derivative, right? So we're going to take the derivative of v with respect to t, and in doing so, we should realize that we have to use the product rule, and I'll let the pi hang out with the r squared for the purposes of the product rule. So I would have 2 pi times r multiplied by dr dt, multiplied now by h and then the second part of my product rule would just be pi r squared multiplied by dh dt and by the time you get here it's really now a matter of just throwing all the information in that you've got and coming up with your result so we're looking for the rate of change of the volume we know we're doing so specifically when the radius is eight we've been told that the rate of change of the radius is positive two and we're also dealing this with this when the height is 10. So there's a lot of information there in that 2 pi r dr dt times h. We're going to add to that pi multiplied by the radius squared. Well, that 8 squared would be a 64. And then the dh dt from up above is a negative 3 in this case. So now we just simplify a little bit. Let's see what do we have here. 8 times 4 is 32 times 10. That would give us 320 times our pi. 
64 times 3, that would be a 192, but because it's negative, we're going to subtract it. And so 320 minus 192, well, 320 uh, minus 200 would be 120, but we're going to have to subtract 8 more, it looks like. So that's going to give us, I believe, 112 pi, and it would be a positive. Uh, let's do that again. I don't know how to subtract, <laughs> do I? Tell you what, if I don't know how to subtract, why don't I just do this? Nothing wrong with that, right? I'm not going to... My pride's not hurt here. So it's going to be 128. I forgot to add that extra little 8. So 128 pi. And um, our units, well, that's going to be a really good point here with part A. You're looking for the rate of change of volume. Volume by its nature is measured in cubic units. Since our units are feet, we want cubic feet. And because that this was a rate of change with respect to time, your time element is going to go into the denominator as per minute. So as this cylinder undergoes this change, basically the radius is growing, but our height is shrinking, but that's still going to net influence our volume growing still by this rate of positive 128 pi. Let's go ahead and take a look at part B and see how it differs. Now the radius is decreasing at 4 feet per minute and the height is increasing at 2 feet per minute. Find the rate of change of the surface area of the cylinder at the moment the height is 10 and the radius is 8. Well again you can draw the picture but it's probably not going to change a whole heck of a lot. It's still a cylinder. It still has a height. The only time, the only thing now is that this height is increasing and the radius r is actually going to decrease. So I'm going to send it the other direction. Now we're still given some rates, but I like I said, they're a little different. So the dr dt is going to be negative 4 since we see that it's decreasing and the height is increasing at a rate of 2. What I told my students, like if you want to picture this this problem sort of in a real world scenario kind of reminds me when we were all kids and we used to play with play-doh and you open up the little cylinder of play-doh and you plop it out for the first time and that smell right we all love that smell and that little piece of play-doh is still in the shape of a cylinder and if you start rolling it in between your hands it's likely that the radius is going to get smaller but the height will get longer. And we're assuming that it retains the general shape of a cylinder too. Now what we're going to find here is the rate of change of the surface area. So I'm going to use capital S for surface area. You really can use anything that you want. And we're going to do this at the specific moment uh, that height is 10 and radius is 8, which is what we had before in part A. Now obviously a big change is the equation. We're going to be using the equation for surface area. This is another equation that would be provided to you. But basically, the surface area is just a pair of circles, right? You've got a circle on the top and the bottom of your cylinder. So pi r squared multiplied by 2. And then if you think about the outside or lateral surface area of a cylinder is nothing more than the height multiplied by the circumference, right? The distance around 2 pi r multiplied by h, and that will always give you a nice surface area of a cylinder. We're going to take this derivative. This derivative is a little bit of a pain to take because we have a, a straight up power rule here where I'll plop the 4 in front, multiply by the pi r, and then I have a dr dt. But for the other portion of this, looks like we've got a bit of a product rule with the 2 pi r times the h. So the derivative of 2 pi r is 2 pi tack on the dr dt, multiply by h, add to that the 2 pi r, and then if you multiply by the derivative of the h, you've completed your product rule. So obviously a lot of things that have to be accounted for here in this ds dt equation. And so we're going to start plugging in what we know. And again, I can't emphasize enough. Having these written down just pretty close to the equation in which they're going to be used can really help out um, a lot of, of issues where you could make small mistakes and I think it minimizes that possibility. 
and who knows, you could get some partial credit for having this information down depending on your teacher. So we've got 4 pi multiplied by the r, which is 8, multiplied by the dr dt, which is negative 4. And then we'll add 2 pi times a dr dt again, which is negative 4, multiplied by our h, which is 10. And then finishing up, we have a 2 pi. Let's see if I can squeeze this in. R is 8, and the dh dt is positive 2. So now it's just a matter of getting this all cleaned up. Looks like I've got 8 times 4, which is 32. 32 times 4, that would be 32 doubled. 64, double that again, it's 128, although it has a negative in front. 10 times 4 times 2, that would be 80, and it's a negative 80 in this case. And then I will add 8 times 2 times 2, which is an 8 times 4, or positive 32. So essentially we have negative 208 plus 32. All right, so I didn't want to take any chances, so I checked this on a calculator, and I got negative 176. And pi would also go along with it. And it is important that we do put our units here. Now this is a surface area, keyword there being area. So that's going to be measured in square feet. And then we still have our per time, which is per minute. Now in this particular situation, as we roll that Play-Doh and the radius gets smaller, but the height gets bigger, we're actually taking away from that outer surface area. And thus, that's why it's decreasing. So there's your first cylinder problem with related rates. Stay tuned. We've got several others coming down the pike that will help you kind of become a little bit better at dealing with all types of problem situations when you're dealing with related rates. So definitely tune in. Thanks for joining us.